All right, so I am here with two young millionaires. Yes. And I'm excited to be here with you as well. If you are a teenager, a 20 year old, 30, 40, 50, 60, this is the concept of going from being a self-employed person or maybe even an employee and truly figuring out how to create true wealth. Now, what, I'm sh what you see right here is something by the, one of the number one authors in the world. Do you know who that is? Robert Kiyosaki, The Rich Dad Quadrant, uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad, and The Four Quadrants that we're gonna go over that talks, uh, it's a different paradigm shift. Because many people, even in 2018, 19, 20, and depending on when you're watching this, we are programmed to do what? Go to, college. Go to school, right? College. And then go to what? College. college, and then after college, do what? Work on a job. Work for someone. Work, work for someone. But Robert Kiyosaki and many other people show, especially now in a world where you can learn from almost any human being in the entire world, whether it's through a podcast, a video, whether it's through an Instagram post, whether it's through their book as an author, you can learn from some of the top leaders in the world. And today, we're gonna learn from someone that changed my paradigm shift because I was taught, I was taught to go to school, get a, get a good education, go to college, and that's why even me, even though I had three businesses before I started college, I still thought it made more sense to go to college. And I'm not saying college is bad, but let me share with you uh, some perspective on how to truly get money working for you and how to truly create freedom for you. And what, what really sparked this, what really sparked this, and by the way, this is, these are my incredible kids. We have four daughters. This is Mackenzie at the time of this video is 16 years old and Madison. And if they look alike, they are because they're identical twins. Although Maddie's one minute older, right? Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and get rock and rolling. And what really prompted this is McKinsey says, Dad, I have a vision. And look, I want you to understand this vision. I'm doing this vision. This isn't just my vision. This is something I'm actually gonna do, right? Mm -hmm. And her whole, her goal is to get a big building, multiple beauty spaces that include hair, nail, uh, facials, live music, karaoke, coffee, juice bar, and she's gonna attract people, how? With happy hour, right? Fun, Fun and raffles, and um, and like a, a community type feel. Karaoke music. Karaoke, and, and it's gonna be tanning, and a whole bunch of, so the vision's amazing. And she says, I said, how are you gonna do this vision? And she says, I'm going to go and get my degree, right? <laughs> go and get your degree For in hair for hair and cosmetology, cosmetology so you could be knowledgeable and that so she can start working doing the actual work of cosmetology and and I told her the steps that you laid out if that's your calling and your passion I'm going to be your biggest cheerleader if that's what motivates you to go from what you're doing right now in life to accomplishing the goals that you set out and it may be the absolute perfect steps that, that, that you can make sense that actually gives you the confidence to go walk that out. And then what did I say to you? I said, what if though, and if that's your path, I'm gonna encourage you. If that's your path to go get the education and get the degree in cosmetology or whatever you wanna do, whether it's college or beauty school or whatever, then we're gonna be your biggest fans. But one of the things that I challenged her with and I'm gonna challenge you with as well is what is another perspective? How could you get another perspective that shortens the learning curve, increases the influence, blesses more clients, and gives both of you and you the freedom to be able to accomplish more of what your purpose in life is and be able to, again, serve more people? What if there's another model, another way to serve more people? And that led me to remembering, and again, it's hard sometimes when it's your dad, because they hear me for the last 16 years of their life trying to educate him, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes dad can be kind of, I don't want to speak this, but sometimes it's not easy to listen to dad all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So hopefully you're listening, right? And they're listening too, because they're getting hungry in life to want to understand this. But I wanted, to, I wanted you to understand, if you haven't got the book yet, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, by Robert Kiyosaki, and we'll put the links in here below. I'm gonna go through a highlight of the most important, most impactful thing 
that transformed my life. And I know it's transformed millions of life. That's why it's a number one uh, New York Times bestseller. So there's four different ways to create income, girls. And for those of you that are watching, boys, men, uh, you could do it as an employee where again, a lot of people go to school, high school at least, some people go to college to become an employee where you commute to a job, whether it's down the street, some people work at home as an employee, but you can become an employee where you work for someone else. And look, I'm not, I'm not gonna say it's, it's, it's bad not to learn. Uh, the key is the only way for you two that I would ever recommend being an employee is if you want to learn from someone. If someone's, if, if the number, and I, when, it, when it comes to working for an employee, there would only be one, there'd be one goal that I would have to work for an employee. You know what that would be? So that you can learn how to do it yourself. So you can learn how to do it yourself. How to do it yourself. And sometimes you might be called to partner with someone. And maybe you're supposed to partner with, maybe you're supposed to partner with someone as an employee. It's possible. Maybe you can create, you know, some people, they, they predict about 5% of the people can create wealth working as an employee. So I'm not saying it's not for everybody. Some people are called to serve where they're planted as an employee. So it's very possible. But if I knew it, what I would want to do is align myself with not the number two, not the number three, not the number 10 best person that I'd want to work with. I would want to find who is the best person in what field would you want to do? And if you could do any career, if you could do any career, put it in the comments below, by the way. If you could do any career, would it be beauty? Mm -hmm. Creating your own cosmetic line? Yeah. Yeah. How cosmetic about you, Maddie? And hair. Not to be put on the spot, but what do you say? What do you say? All right, what do you say? <laughs> right? Seriously, put your comments below. Step up. Entrepreneurs are bold. Entrepreneurs are take action. And one small way you can take action is let me know. We're really curious. We'll definitely look at your comments of what you want to do. So if you're to work for an employee, I would find, I would Google right now, if it's cosmetology, if it's hair and makeup, who is the most influential, knowledgeable, educatable person, educated person, whether they have a degree or not, who is the most successful person you would want to emulate? And I would find a way creatively to connect with that one person. But don't count on that one person only. Find two or three or four or five or six or 50 or 100 of the most influential people throughout the world that you would love to work with or interview, which we'll get to here in a little while. But if you're going to be an employee, that's one idea. Now, obviously, you guys are 16. If you want to work at the grocery store, get experience. I think it's a great idea, too, by the way, uh, to get experience, just to get what it's like to have work ethic. And also... Another reason why I encourage these guys, Madison McKinsey, and I would encourage you, especially if you're a teenager or young person, to get a job is if you've never had a job, you're either going to love it or you're going to feel the pain of, oh, but it's Friday night and I've got to work, right? Oh my gosh, it's New Year's Eve day and I got to go to work. This is, if you're, this is why if you want freedom, you want to be have leverage in your life, you want to learn, uh, one of the best ways to learn is to learn what you don't want to do. So I always recommend definitely having at least one job if, unless of course, you know that you know you're ready to rock the world and build your own brand, build your own business online. All right, so employee. Again, uh, that would be one benefit, uh, one of many benefits of being an employee. Plus it gives you income and, and, and it can give you experience to be maybe what's called self-employed. Self-employed is, is a lot of what you talked about. Self-employed means you're employing who? Means you're giving who a job? Other people. You may be giving other people a job, but who else? Yourself. Exactly. Self-employed means you're smart enough to create a business, but you are employing yourself to work the labor, to actually put the time into working that as like a job. So it's not a job, a J-O-B, like being an employee, but it could be the exact same thing. It could actually be worse. Most self-employed people, like, let's give an example. Someone buys a Subway franchise, a, su a juice bar. Let's say a juice bar. If you, if, if you say, hey, I love juice bars, and you wanna go open a juice bar down the street, 
And because you're new, you're not able to hire people, maybe, let's say. So guess who works? You. You do. You do, right? And that means most likely your hours of operation are, let's say, 10 a.m. to 7 o'clock at night every night. In the beginning, you might have to work 10 o'clock to 7 o'clock every single day. How many hours is that? How many hours is that, Kim? Anybody? Ten. Anyways, it's a ton of hours. 10 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Every day, usually six to seven days a week. So you're what's called a self-employment, I like to call it a self-employment slave. Is it bad? No. Is it the best way to earn money? No, not in my opinion. It's not a, self-employment is beautiful. It gives you the freedom, hopefully, if you run, if you run your self-employed business right, but there's a better way. And this is what I wanted to show with you. And this is why it's so awesome what you said. And it might be a great path for you, but let me give you a different perspective of what Robert Kiyosaki teaches so many people. You go from being an employee to self-employed, but ultimately you become BO. You get BO. Would you like some BO? Or would you like to be a business owner? Being a business owner means you own the business the business doesn't own who? You. Exactly. High fives. High five. Boop. High five. High five, honey. So the business, does, the business doesn't own you. You own the business. It's almost like setting up a system. You know how you play Monopoly? Yeah. When you play Monopoly, McKinsey and Maddie, it's like you learn a system for success that works. And that's what running up and owning where the business is your, is your cash machine. You make money with that business because you set up. So as an example, you said you wanted to set up a building mm -hmm. and work doing the cosmetology and the beauty and the makeup, which again, might be your calling. Also hire other people. I just be working with them. So you hire other people too, which I think is a great way potentially to learn and get experience and start. What, what you want, what a lot of people evolve to is being a hundred percent. If you get sick, you still make money. If you sleep, the business still pays you money. If you go on a vacation for a day, a week, a month, if you wanna go on a mission trip for two years straight and take off, the goal, the end, end, end in mind is to get to a place where you can hire every skill and every position and every talent in that system, which again, that system is a business, that business is a system. So you own that business and all of the people that you've leveraged that work with you in that specific enterprise run here. Another way to do be a business owner is partner with a company that already has an infrastructure in place, like direct marketing, network marketing, internet marketing, building funnels, building systems, helps you from going from self-employed to learning how to leverage on the internet, also building your brand. The number one way, and when this was created, there was no such thing as building an online brand. But the number one way, the gold rush of the world right now is the, the best time in the history of our entire world, especially here in America, is to be a business owner in influence marketing. So the best way to raise money, the best way to build a business, the best way to be an owner, the best way to leverage your time long term is to learn how to get people to like you, trust you, maybe even love you, maybe want to be a part of a community, a group of people on the internet through Instagram, through LinkedIn, through YouTube, through Facebook, through wherever people are at in the year that you're watching this video. Mm -hmm. And the number one way to do this right now at 16 years old or 15 years old or 12 years old or 25 years old, like our, our camera guy, 25? 23, boom, 23 years old, or my beautiful wife who's 47 years old, I'm just kidding, 45 years old. Uh, the, the, best way to do, the best way to learn how to be a business owner right now is if you have a passion for anything, go directly to the source of who's the best person in the world and interview them, learn, ask them questions, put it on a podcast, do a live stream with them and learn. So instead of necessarily going and getting a degree in cosmetology, which is not a bad idea, but a great idea, what people are doing these days is going directly to the source, bypassing sitting in a class or studying or having to do the technical aspects,
Because who created that course anyways? Someone who their opinion was for you to be certified by going through their process of systems. And you can go directly to, to whoever the best person in the world is to learn how to be a business owner and get that business working for you. Anyways, we could spend hours on this alone. But the bottom line of being a business owner is learn how to get a business working for you to where if you got sick, you wanted to take a vacation, you have the freedom to have that business continually pump out money for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you're not having to work for that money and you're not having to work for someone for that money. You with me? And then guess what you do when you start making $500 a month, $5,000 a month, $50,000 a month. There's the only thing, the only way to add another zip zero, more experience and leverage and action. Experience, leverage and action, knowledge will give you, will let you add over time. The more you fail, the more you learn, the more you course correct, which means you, you learn what doesn't work to do it the right way. You guys look at us and you've seen our failures for the last 16 years. You saw when we lived in an apartment building and now we live a little different lifestyle. We've been up and downs because we've made mistakes, but we've learned. The cool thing about you, if you're watching this right now, you can take, you can take all the failures of your parents, all the successes maybe of your parents, the failures of me, the successes of me, the failures and successes of Gary Vaynerchuk and Grant Cardone and all the Robert Kiyosaki's and you can read their books, you can learn from them, you can learn from people around the world and open the whole world. Literally, I know this sounds crazy, but you, you two, three, four, five years, you can be making multiple six figures of leverageable passive residual income. You could be earning a seven figure, which is a million dollars a year in business you can get to the point where you even have millions of dollars of profit by learning how to be a business owner. And then, and then when you make money, where's the best place to put that money? Where do you think the best, when you make a lot of money or a little bit of money, where do you think the best place? Investing. Boom! <laughs> Investing it, right? Remember I was showing you, you know, and again, I'm not saying stocks are the best way, Talk to Warren Buffett, stocks, investing in the right companies are the best way to do it. Talk to Grant Cardone, Grant Cardone's gonna tell you apartment buildings. Is Warren right? Warren Buffett right or is Warren Buffett wrong? Is Grant Cardone right in real estate? Look, make your opinion based on knowledge and learning of what you wanna do. Is it stocks, is it buying companies? There's two things you wanna do with your money. One, you want to reinvest it you wanna pay yourself, well there's three things. You wanna pay yourself first, which means take a little bit out so you can give yourself that, that pay a tiny bit to yourself or some to yourself, reinvest it back here or and, or and you wanna invest that money. As an example, I'm not saying again, stocks is your thing, but I showed you in a click of 30 seconds how I clicked a couple buttons and bought a piece, of, I, I own the leverage of a few companies. Right now, How much you have now? in the last uh, 15 minutes, I'm down $7.95, right? But I'm not worried about it. It's a long-term investment. So I take some of my money in running our company and I invest it. And one of the best places, of course, to invest it in is real estate. But you can also buy other businesses. You can also, again, reinvest it into your business or learn and grow from other financially wealthy people. You don't need to go to college to learn how to invest. You don't necessarily need to get any kind of degree to learn how to invest or to start a business. You can learn from people that are wealthy. You can learn from business owners that are successful and there will be someone. It may not be dad all the time, but there is someone that you can find or two people that you can find that will give you the access, the knowledge that you can learn from. And what I would do if I was you is I would build a brand out of being young because older people, they are more apt. Is that the right word? They are more willing to help young people and mentor them. The younger you are, sometimes the more they're impressed with you and they want to help you. And you could say, hey, I want to, is it okay if I video me interviewing you? to learn how to be a young entrepreneur in this world today. 
And do you mind if you mind if I come by with my, you know, my dad or or you guys can set up an interview. So that's a great way to start building your brand if you wanted to learn from people in any field that you want to learn from. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And how do you start? The cool thing, if anyways, we can get into that in another video. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So which quadrant do you guys want to be? Which quadrant yes. do you want to be? Ultimately, if you could pick two quadrants. What two quadrants do you want to be? Put your comments in here below. Let me know which quadrants that you want to uh, want to be. How about you girls? What quadrants do you guys want to be in? Business owner and investor. Boom, chickalaka. Good job, guys. Good job for you. When you create the success that you're supposed to be uh, creating, when you reach your calling and your purpose in life, please let us know. Let us know, uh, let us know where you're at right now. Let us know what your passion is. What's your business? We want to get to know you. Are you going to look at their comments, yes. girls? Tell you're going to look at their comments? We will look at your comments. Oh, yeah. Yes. Right. And, and boys, these are my daughters. <laughs> right? I may be old. Still got some guns. Just kidding. All right. God bless you. And uh, go crush it.